The coalition government in Pakistan announced its decision to ban PTI and pursue Article 6 proceedings against former Prime Minister Imran Khan, former President Arif Alvi, and former Deputy Speaker Qasim Suri. The no confidence motion has been the assembly of the assembly. The government has made this decision that until the Sadar Arif Alvi, until the Vazir Azam Imran Niazi, and until the Deputy Speaker Qasim Suri has been the reference move kiya jaye. और ये आर्टिकल 6 का रेफरेंस जो है ये भी काबीना से मंजूरी के बाद सुप्रीम कोर्ट को भिजवाया जाए द डिसीजन फॉलोस रीसेंट कोर्ट रूलिंग्स इन फेवर ऑफ पीटीआई ऑन रिजर्व्ड सीट्स एंड द इडाट केस फॉलोइंग द इंफॉर्मेशन मिनिस्टर्स प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस पीटीआई लीडर्स डिनाउंस्ड द डिसीजन अर्जिंग डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टीज टू सपोर्ट डेमोक्रेसी पीपल्स पार्टी एमक्यूएम और ये बाकी पार्टियां जो इस वक्त इनके साथ हैं वो भी इनके साथ नहीं है इस चीज पे और हम लोग डिमांड करते हैं जिन्होंने जमहूरियत का लबादा ओढ़ा हुआ है वो साफ साफ मैदान में आके कह, कहें कि क्या वो मुस्लिम लीग नून के इस गैर जमहूरी रद्द अमल का साथ देते हैं इन लीगल न्यूज अलाहौर एंटी टेररिज्म कोर्ट इंडाइटेड फॉर्मर फॉरन मिनिस्टर शाह महमूद कुरैशी इन द शैडमिन पुलिस स्टेशन अटैक केस रिलेटेड टू द मे नाइन्थ रायट्स द नेशन वाइड प्रोटेस्ट वर ट्रिगर्ड लास्ट ईयर बाई द अरेस्ट ऑफ पी टी आई फाउंडर इमरान खान Social media showed rioting and vandalism, including attacks on military installations. Qureshi, implicated in multiple cases, was granted bail in 13 cases in February. At a hearing in Kotlikpat jail, Qureshi pleaded not guilty. The court adjourned the hearing till July 18th, summoning witnesses for the next session. In economic news, the Pakistan Stock Exchange kicked off the week with a strong performance, crossing the 81,000 mark, thanks to a newly signed deal with the International Monetary Fund. The KSE 100 index jumped by 1,276.91 points, or 1.6 percent, reaching 81,221 points from the previous close of 79,944.09 around 11 a.m. By the end of the trading day, the index settled at 81,155.60 points, up by 1,211.51 points, or 1.52 percent, from the previous close. In Gaza. Tragedy struck as Israeli bombings hit a house in Maghazi refugee camp, killing and injuring four people, according to Al Jazeera. The overnight strikes targeted a residential home, claiming the lives of at least five Palestinians, including three children. The Gaza Health Ministry reported staggering casualties, stating that over 38,664 people have been killed and 89,097 injured since October 7. In the last 24 hours alone, 80 Palestinians lost their lives and 216 were injured. Over the weekend, Israeli forces intensified their airstrikes in southern and central Gaza. Reuters reported that these strikes aimed to put pressure on Hamas, following a deadly attack on the militant group's leadership, resulting in numerous casualties in a designated safe zone. Israel's defense minister praised the pilots for the deadly airstrikes on Al Mawasi, claiming they are weakening Hamas daily, preventing them from organizing or caring for the wounded. Meanwhile, the armed wing of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad stated that it will continue to attack Israeli troops and tanks in the southern city of Rafah after Israel launched a ground offensive there. Fighters also fired a barrage of mortar rounds at Israeli soldiers near the airport in eastern Rafah. On the international front, British Foreign Secretary David Lammy, in Israel for talks, reiterated calls for a ceasefire amidst the ongoing conflict. He met with Israeli and Palestinian leaders, urging an end to hostilities and pressing for humanitarian reforms. The Gaza media office condemned U.S. military support for Israel, accusing the U.S. of exacerbating the humanitarian crisis with its involvement in the conflict. On the humanitarian front, the head of the ICRC in Gaza, William Schomburg, described the dire situation, saying that the desperation is overwhelming and getting aid in is complicated by lawlessness. He called for immediate and unimpeded humanitarian access. Moreover, UNRWA's Tamara Al-Rafay condemned the deadliest week yet in Gaza, highlighting attacks on UN facilities. She called for an investigation into these attacks and the killing of staff, emphasizing the need for accountability under international law. The Republican National Convention kicks off this week in Wisconsin amidst heightened security following Saturday's assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. who is set to become the GOP's official nominee. Milwaukee's mayor assured the public of rigorous security measures for the convention, despite concerns raised by the assassination attempt. 
Secret Service Director Kim Cheadle expressed confidence in adaptable security plans. President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris are receiving updates in the White House Situation Room from Homeland Security and law enforcement officials regarding the investigation into the attempt on Trump's life. In his address last night, President Biden acknowledged the start of the Republican convention and emphasized the need for peaceful discourse amidst political disagreements. Meanwhile, U.S. District Judge Aileen Cannon dismissed the case against Trump involving classified documents, citing concerns over the appointment of the prosecutor. This decision follows a Supreme Court ruling that former presidents have broad immunity from criminal prosecution. In response to the shooting, Trump's campaign has pivoted its convention message towards unity and optimism, aiming to broaden appeal among moderate voters and people of color. India is actively seeking to boost its exports to Russia following Prime Minister Narendra Modi's recent visit to Moscow. Trade between the two countries surged to $65.7 billion last fiscal year, largely driven by India's increased imports of Russian oil amidst sanctions from Europe. Indian Trade Secretary Sunil Barthwal announced measures to address non-tariff barriers on Indian exports like marine food products and advocated for more rupee-ruble trade, despite challenges in currency transactions. Meanwhile, thousands of lawyers in India protested changes to criminal legislation, including new provisions for the death penalty in gang rape cases involving minors. Critics argue the reforms could strain the justice system and give excessive power to the police. On the domestic front, India's stock markets hit record highs, boosted by strong earnings reports from IT giants like TCS and HCL Tech. Investors are optimistic about the upcoming national budget, expecting further economic momentum.